Okay, today's Saturday, it's the 26th of April, um, I've released the results of the Your Revision Song Contest on my other channel, but that, chances are if you're watching this channel then you probably either already know or don't care. Now, it's time for another story time, story time Saturday. I still haven't got the name for it, and this is the last one. <laughs> anyway, I looked at my plans for Vader, because I have like a, a list of plans for what I plan to do for each day, and I'd originally intended to talk about something rather depressing today, but I'm not in the mood for it. I'm, I'm too happy. I'm too happy to talk about something sad. So that idea is gone out the window. Forget about it. And instead, I'm going to talk about something much more relevant and, more importantly, something happy. And I suppose something that's actually kind of maybe relevant right now. It's kind of retrospective, but yeah. I'm just going to dive straight in. Now, those of you who know me well, or even those of you who've seen enough of my videos, know that my special talent, as it were, revolves around speaking languages. Now, to recap, if you're not aware, I'm currently studying and am able to speak English, Deutsch, Espanol, and Nihongo. <coughs> and on top of that, I have a fairly decent knowledge of Catalan, Netherlands, Francais, Italiano, Lingua Latina, Ruski, Svenska, Zwichod, and the Scots for a total of 13 languages, although it depends whether or not you consider the last two to be valid languages because one of them's from a video game and the other one's borderline dialectal. Uh, still, that's at least 11 languages that I can understand to some degree. Like, I'm not saying I can speak them fluently, but I can understand them enough, like, like if it, I don't know, I can understand them to some degree. Oh, I know a couple of swear words in Turkish as well, but that's hardly worth mentioning. Now. I have to say, I'm actually surprised at my own capacity for foreign languages, although what I find funniest is I can adapt to languages well, like, for example, when I was doing my reviews earlier this year, to have any trouble rattling off foreign words and names like Zemrimi Inyanate in Albanian, or Sigrutha Eirun Frithrikstotir in Icelandic, and yet I completely fail at imitating accents and you know, stuff like that, I, I can't just... Yeah, you know, I, I could say hello in Russian, but I couldn't imitate a Russian accent, like, it's, it's crazy. Uh, the most interesting thing about it all, though, is as a youth, I really didn't care all that much for foreign languages. Like, they, well, for a start, foreign languages weren't even taught in any of the primary schools I went to, and I went to three different primary schools over the course of my youth, and two of them were, two of them were in the same town, the other one was in the other end of the country. So, well, they just didn't teach foreign languages, like it wasn't a thing that they taught. But, uh, in year two, which is about age six or thereabouts, I don't remember exactly, I started going to a French club, which is something that they'd set up. It was like an after-school little thing where they'd, they'd teach French through um, fun and games, basically. So I went there along with a couple of my friends, and you know, from it I picked up a basic understanding of the French language, although I don't really know what I intended to do with that. Like, it's just something that I did for fun. I didn't really... It wasn't because I necessarily wanted to learn the language, and it isn't necessarily because I knew well, I'd need it for something. It's just something I did for a bit of fun. And then I started going to what's called high school in the UK, it's year 7 onwards, so it's about age 11, because we have a different system for America, and that will probably throw some American people off, because high school is a different thing over here. Anyway, that's when foreign languages started to be compulsory for me. Uh, from the first three years, uh, as part of the timetable, I had to study French, German, and Latin. It, it was a private school, they, they insisted on the Latin. Anyway, at, at the end of year 9, we had to take what were referred to as options. We had to decide which subjects we were keeping, which ones we were dropping, what where we might take something up for the next two years, and, you know, so that we were prepared for their associated qualifications, the GCSEs, which is the, the first recognised qualification in the UK, in terms of age. Now, the only limitations were that we could only choose four subjects, and one of them had to be a foreign language. Uh, then there were a bunch of other subjects that were compulsory anyway, so maths, English, the sciences, so biology, chemistry, physics. Um, I think that's where the compulsory ones stopped, apart from one I'm going to mention in a moment. Um, I th anyway, so apart from that, we got to choose four subjects of our own, so that we end up with, I think, ten GCSEs by the end of it. So, my four chosen subjects were ICT, so computers and stuff, didn't really use it for anything. Latin, because I was good at it and actually quite enjoyed it. German, for, for much the same reason, and I, I took up Spanish as well, because I, every year at, at that school, for the first three years, I thought, I'm going to start Spanish next year because that's a thing, I didn't know how the system worked, until eventually, oh my god, I can finally start taking Spanish, because I don't know why I wanted to learn Spanish so badly, but it was a thing that happened. And I'm, I'm glad that I did take it in, because Spanish was only offered to people who did well enough in French and German to receive recommend, like letters of recommendation from both teachers, because we'd have different teachers, as proof that we could cope with learning a new language from scratch in the space of two years, because 
German and French, you'd been learning it for three years to that point, plus two years on top of that. You'd have five years of a language behind you before you'd start doing the, before you take the GCSE exam. Whereas Spanish, you only have those two years to learn exactly the same amount of material. So, needed rec retters of recommendation from our other language teachers as proof that we could cope with it. Uh, sadly, this meant that that took up all four of my choices, so I had to drop French. I didn't want to have to do that. But because religious studies, which I could have easily lived without studying, was compulsory, they couldn't let me continue doing French because I wasn't timing my timetable, despite it being the stronger of my two subjects for me. Despite the fact that I would have easily gotten an A star in French, and I only got an A for RS. Or I might have got an A star in RS, I don't actually remember. But I, I could easily rant for, well, not for days, but for quite a while about the futility of making it compulsory to study RS at, you know, at that level. But I'd rather not because it might be misinterpreted, because I'm not trying to be anti-religion, I'm just saying I kind of, I would rather learn how to speak French rather than, oh, this is what Muslims do at this time of year, like, I respect it, but I kind of don't care, like, you do your thing, I won't bother you. You know, that's just an example. I, I would rather study French than study traditions and customs of other cultures that, uh, that pertain to religion. I, I'm not a religious person myself, so... Yeah. I'd rather study French, personally, but no. Anyway, that leads up to now I'm in college at the moment, which is years 12 and 13. So ages 16, 17, 18. Um, I've continued German and Spanish. I'm also studying English linguistics, but that's kind of a different thing. It's more like language as science as opposed to language as art form. Uh, but Japanese has replaced Latin as the third language that I study, because they don't offer Latin where I am, and I wanted to take up Japanese anyway. So, now... Because of these things that happened, I've actually forgotten a lot of the French that I knew and almost all of my Latin. It took me ages to remember what the word for a deponent verb was, because it's just not a thing in modern language. And anyway, forgetting all it makes me feel actually quite sad, because you know, I'm, a, I'm a polyglot, I want to speak foreign languages, and meh. Uh, hopefully while I'm at university I can take courses on my own time or something to at least get back into French, if nothing else. Because I obviously want to start learning Dutch and Italian in earnest, but... Obviously, I, I want to get back into French. I mean, I've had a website recommended to me by a friend of mine, so we, we'll see what happens. Uh, but now, th this is the main. Well, it's a bit late for me to get into the main meat of this video now. But I can't talk about my capacity for foreign languages without mentioning the single most influential man in my entire life, without whom I don't know where I would be right now. This man was my French teacher in year seven and my German teacher in year eight, and just generally my mentor for learning foreign languages. Now, his name is Dan Wilton. He, he had a doctorate in something. He was Dr. Wilton, basically. That's that's how I knew him. Well, there was a time where students would affectionately refer to him as Whippy Wilton, because according to rumour, his first job had been as an ice cream man in Germany. So, Mr. Whippy, Whippy Wilton. Me. Anyway, he's quite possibly the best language teacher I've ever had the privilege of studying under. Not to discredit my other teachers, of course, it's just he was above and beyond brilliant. Like, he was the Australia at Eurovision of language teachers. Like, he went the extra mile. He was just really, really good. And it's to him that I attribute my capacity and, and enthusiasm for foreign languages. And so I'm incredibly grateful to him for getting the ball rolling with me in foreign languages. And, you know, that's it's because of him that it's led to where I am now. Uh, I've got predicted A's and A stars all across the board at A level. And, like, that's a pretty big thing. That's a, that's a big thing. And I've been given a place at my top university of choice. I mean, sadly, I'm, it's not to study foreign languages, but it's something that is still fairly, you know, formidable entry requirements. And it's also got me in a position where I could travel to quite a few countries, especially within Europe, and you know, speak the language and live and survive perfectly happy there. And you know, without foreign languages, I don't know what I would have found to fill my time between year seven to now. And so I don't know what my life would have become. So I cannot stress just how much I owe that man. So, if he is somehow watching this video, thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Wilton. And perhaps I am fanboying a little bit, but it's justified, as I'm sure you'll be able to tell just from what I've been saying. Seriously, Dr. Wilton is a living legend. I don't remember where he went, but after year nine, he left the school I was, I was studying at to go and be a lecturer at university instead. And so, you know, obviously, I'm the only person who's recognised that he's a brilliant teacher. He's gone on to lecture universities, and I hope that he's still inspiring people to this day, and if you are one of his students, I don't know if that's likely or possible or whatever, but if you do happen to be studying under him, consider yourself privileged, because he is a brilliant man. And the last time that I encountered him was, um, I, I don't remember the exact story behind it, but 
at, at my high school, every couple of years or so, we'd have to go and do a, a couple of days residential at the outdoor centre, which is basically, oh, this is how you use a map and survive in the wild where you're never actually going to go. And it turned out that Dr. Wilson was a friend of my form tutor that year, one Dr. Lynn Gilbert, who was a biology teacher. And those two were kind of friends, and so she brought him as her plus one. And while we were there, um, because I knew that that was the last time I'd see him, I asked if I could get a photo of him, and I kind of regret not getting him to sign it, but maybe that would be a bit too far. And so instead, in in lieu of a frivolous ending to this episode, I'm just going to put in the, the photo of Dr. Wilton, and yeah, if you ever see him, just congratulate him for being an amazing person. I am so grateful for everything he's done for me. Oof, ten minutes fanboying over one of my teachers, I kind of apologise, but you know, hashtag sorry not sorry.